Oh, this is big. This is big. Got him. That's what I'm talking about. That's why we got on an eight hour flight to the USA. So with my brother Alex, we enjoy traveling, fishing, filming. We work full time for a fishing company in the UK, producing video content, advertorial stuff for them. Uh, but what we really look forward to is trips like these, trips across the world and across the country, trying to catch new, exciting species of fish. Filming videos with my brother Alex definitely has brought us closer together. You get a lot of siblings who argue and fight and don't really get along too well, but it's quite nice that we both share the same passions, the same excitement for traveling and filming and documenting our adventures, and of course, uh, fishing as well. But it's not just Alex and I that fishing has brought closer together, it's also new people that we've met around the world. One of those special people uh, is John B. My name is John. Um, I have my own fishing YouTube channel in the United States. Been filming for roughly nine years now. Um, primarily bass fishing videos, but travel all over the world and the United States to tackle the best bite. My dad got me to fishing and when I was about four years old. He took me to a small lake and we went fishing for bluegill. And uh, it became like a weekend ritual. Every single weekend we'd come out and he'd take me to a new body of water and we'd catch bluegill, catch small bass. And eventually it took off beyond that. And it was just something I could do on the weekends. Like it kept me busy. It was always new and fresh. Whereas like all the other things I enjoyed, all the other hobbies were the same outcome. Whereas fishing, you go out there you catch a different fish every single day. It's a new body of water and it's a new scenario in which you just get lost in. And I, I grew strongly addicted to that. I've always been a huge believer in like capturing the experience, whether it be like writing about my day or taking pictures and I want to take it to the next step, that next level, that being video. And I looked up to a lot of anglers that were on TV at the point in time when I was fishing and I wanted to do that. I wanted to be like them. And I felt like it was definitely a possibility. And the closest thing to that was YouTube. So I would take these videos that film, whether they be like a minute long, two minutes long, upload them on YouTube and just share my experience. I think right around when I graduated from high school, I didn't know exactly what I wanted. I knew um, that I needed to do something that fit who I was. I looked in the options of going into fish management and aquaculture science. In less fancier terms, that means raising fish and learning how to, to take care of them. Uh, that was something that was cool, but it still wasn't like my calling. It wasn't exactly what I'd wanted. And uh, I returned to my videos. I kind of walked away from videos for a few short months and I returned to that. And I used my videos as a way to kind of get away from school like I did in the past as a kid. And it turned into something that was really growing traction again. So right around my second year of college, I got a job offer to work for a fishing company. Um, I interned, then I ended up working full time. I left college, completely just walked away from it. Very risky move, but it was something I felt like I needed to do. And soon after working at Mystery Tackle Box for a few short months, I ended up straying away from that and detaching myself from that work life and focusing more on my YouTube channel and making videos for myself. My current life situation right now is I am living in Texas with uh, three other dudes or two other dudes that do the same thing I do. Um, it's become not only a job, but almost like a lifestyle now. We, we travel all over the place. Uh, we link up, we collaborate, we make videos and just try to think of the most creative idea and capture it on, on, on footage. And within that, we're also trying to get other anglers into fishing too, other, other kids that you know, are 12, 13, 14, or even older, you know, a lot of adults are getting to fishing now and they're watching YouTube to get into it. 
So we're hoping to kind of share that passion and in the midst of it, just have like a, an absolute ton of fun. You know, that's, that's the main goal. Like I said, it's, it's not always bass. Bass is what I grew up fishing, but I've wanted to expand outside of that. So with that constant drive of trying something new, I reached out to Carl and Alex last year to see if they wanted to link up and fish. I've been watching their videos for quite some time now. And uh, while I didn't really see too much of a hype in carp, I wanted to learn what it was all about. So I wanted to give any sort of fishing a chance. Little did we know John was gonna get in touch with us via Instagram and ask if he could come and join us in the UK for a couple of weeks of fishing. We spent two weeks with John in the spring fishing for all manner of UK species, carp, barbel, chub, all sorts. It was an amazing couple of weeks fishing. John shot some wicked videos and in return for us guiding him for those two weeks, he said, why, not, why don't you guys come to the States? We'll do a bit of a road trip. We'll have a good adventure and you guys can get onto some proper bass fishing. Eventually, you know, these guys got their plane tickets. I was in the works of getting a boat and you have a boat before we planned this trip. Uh, and it all fell into place, kind of like the UK trip. And um, yeah, the rest is history. I'm a pretty driven person, but I'm also not the most organized and uh, not the most tedious individual, especially when it comes to my gear and equipment. So literally the day that Carl and Alex flew in, I was just picking my boat up from the shop. It needed a little bit of tuning and uh, let's just say we were down to the wire as far as getting this boat ready for this big trip. Luckily, like most times, everything worked out. Bass fishing is, is the end thing in the United States. You know, there's a lot of different types of anglers out there, but bass fishing is the pinnacle. Um, once a year, uh, about a hundred anglers come to one lake to fish for five fish uh, for five hundred thousand dollar grand prize. That's a big deal, you know. That's that's a huge event, and that's a huge event that gets a lot of people together. So with all that hype um, comes a lot of interest. So you've got a lot of kids that are going out to, to local ponds around their house, big lakes, and they're chasing after largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, spotted bass. It's the goal. It's the prize here in the U.S., and it's what everyone wants to catch. Welcome to the U.S. How are you? Sorry it took me so long. No, it's fine. How's it going? Good to see you again. Good to see you guys. Wow, you made it. Yeah, we did. Let's get loaded up. Let's do some fishing. Come on, let's go. I'm sure you're pretty tired. How long have you guys been up for? Um, ages. Ages? Yeah. No, Can you do we... it? Can you handle or do we have to do like a one one hour fishing trip and uh, call out? Do you remember the UK trip? Yeah. Yeah. No sleep for no sleep. three days. <laughs> if we weren't fishing, we were on the road. Yeah. If we weren't on the road, we were in tents waiting for a bite. Yeah. This is how this trip's gonna be. You guys gave me no mercy for that trip. I'm gonna hey, I'm gonna keep you guys on your toes, yeah. In a good way, in a good way. Just had a bite to eat, had a tour around the house, and that's where we're gonna be staying for the next few days. But for now, John's going straight in, and we're off fishing right now. Try and catch our first bass in the USA. Here goes nothing. I'm on a boat in Illinois, America. I'm going bass fishing for the first time. <laughs> I'll see you again sometime. Or maybe are you pushing it forward and then slide it up. Oh, oh. <laughs> Carl is gone. Problem number one, trolling motor doesn't work. Something isn't right there. Oh, oh no, I know, press the button twice, in the middle. <laughs> it's working. Oh yeah. I was worried. Carl has eventually figured out how to use a trolling motor. And now he is coming over to get us. Thought he was gone forever then. It is a public lake, but you're supposed to pay a fee. I didn't know that though. <laughs> Right? You didn't know that either? 
Yeah, some sort of fee. Uh, the guy's actually like, he's right there, so. He's probably looking for a sticker. Don't have one. Oh, I'm pumped, boys. I'm so ready for you guys just to freaking yoke on. We may not catch anything here today, but the least we could use today is like a get in the swing kind of deal. We're ready to go. So here we were making our first casts into an American lake in search of bass. Let's just say I didn't really get the hang of the bait casting reel very quickly. There was a bit of this. Quite a lot of this. Well, that just sums it up. <laughs> just casting in a tree. And eventually, I made a cast which went like this. Perfect. No way. Yeah. This fish was like three hours due. Not a bad one. Oh, check it out. <laughs> yes, John. First bass of the trip. <laughs> Only been fishing for. I was literally falling asleep. I was like shocked. I was like, that can't be a fish. There we have it. Our first largemouth, a northern Illinois largemouth. So this is a northern strain, a little bit different than the fish that we're gonna be catching here in a few short days. But they look a little bit different. Their mouths are smaller, they're way greener, and they don't get as large as the uh, southern strain or like some of the, the Texas fish that we'll be catching shortly. He fell victim to the jerk bait though. Check that out, man. The first bass of the trip. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, I didn't think we were gonna catch one today, guys. Carl did my slow-mo. <laughs> How was that, crispy? Yes! Okay, now we're moving up. That's a fish. Yeah. That's a fish. Second fish of the trip though, if you yeah. can get Second it in. Fish. Oh. Yeah, that's actually not a bad one. I thought you got smaller. Here it's hooked up just barely. Oh yeah. Get over here. <laughs> nice largey. Smaller than the last, but equally as feisty, right? Boop, boop, boop. Okay, there she goes. Ooh, chilly. God, these fish are cold. Well, things that we need for this trip that I should have picked up before you guys came is are you supposed to help me remember? Charger? Or no, no, we don't need the charger. I crossed off the list. Yeah. Uh, jack, in case we blow a tire, which is very possible. And then we need a um, extension cord, a rolly extension cord. And then whatever else looks good in there that I want to buy. I don't know. <laughs> we might end up yeah. buying a few other. Let me just buy some largemouth bass to make up for today. <laughs> That evening we got our first taste for American food. We went to a restaurant and I ordered strawberries on toast. Now the toast definitely didn't taste like the toast I was used to. It tasted like brioche, so sweet bread, covered in honey or syrup or something really sweet. And for some reason it was served with fried chicken as well. Such a weird combination of foods, but it was all right. It was nice, maybe on the sweet side, but I enjoyed it. It's day two, it's really quite cold, but we're at a power station lake. So the water here is actually heated from the outlet of a nuclear power plant. So that's pretty interesting. Hopefully the bass are gonna bite today. Bridewood Lake was open very, very windy, and the waves that were getting up on the surface, we could have been out in the ocean. 
To describe the fishing on that day in one word, it would just be tough. It was a, a long, tough day's fishing. And we actually called it a day early to head elsewhere. When we drove back to the boat launch, there were waves coming over the front of the boat, splashing water all over us. I remember sat at the front of the boat filming Carl, and at times I could hardly even see him. The water was so thick between us. I remember Carl getting out of the boat at the end, and he squeezed all the water out of his clothes. We all were drenched. Oh, oh, my Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is not good. What's going on here? Okay. No, the biggest waves I've ever seen on a lake, and we are all sucked. Oh, it's so wow. Oh Welcome to the United States, guys. Having fun yet? These guys, these, you guys put you guys put put me on my first ever fly carp within the first like hour of being in the UK. All I've done is gotten you soaking wet and you wind burned. <laughs> Love it. We're getting out of here though. I will say, if I get the vibe that it's not worth it, we're leaving. And we're constantly moving. I'm trying. As far as magic goes, I got like this much, but I'm working it all. Watching a few of John's videos made us realize there's quite a lot of smaller ponds around his area. It's not necessarily all about big lake fishing. Instead, you might fish four or five ponds in a day, making a few casts, working out if the, if the bite is on, and then moving elsewhere. The first couple of places we tried, it was slow, didn't get any bites, but eventually Alex did find a hungry feeding bass. Oh yeah? Yep. Yes! Go on, Alex. Yeah. Oh my goodness! That is Come on. Oh, you got one. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. My first bass from the USA. Check it out. I was, I was really unsure what to look for with the bite, just because I'd never, never felt it before. But yeah, it was pretty obvious. It was like a big da da da. Wound down, hit it, and we got this beautiful largemouth bass on the end. Yeah! Alex managed to catch one, which was a PB. But it wasn't exactly going to be hard to beat as PB, to be honest. But it's all good. Sun's out, it's nice and warm, and we've got one. Ticked off the list. Here we go again. It's not bad, it's not bad at all. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a really good fish. He's so much bigger than my other one. Oh my god. I need to get him. I need to get him. Come on. Come on. Oh my god. That's a new PB bass. <laughs> this is about 10 times bigger than my other one. What? <laughs> Look how big its mouth is. Wow. What? Look how beautiful the colours are, they're so green. <laughs> I'm speechless, that was amazing, Carl. Like, felt the tap, felt the tap, reeled down, checked that it was there, bam, set the hook. Wow. Look how nice they are. You got a bass, Alex. They are such cool fit. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. Oh man, this is so epic. Second day in the USA, pond hopping, big bass. Yes! Oh, that's why we came to America, Carl. To catch a bass and to catch one just like that on a jig. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, this is big. This feels big. Oh, he's another good one. He's another good one. Oh, he might be bigger. Boom. Look at that. <laughs> what is going on? That is a chunk. It's bigger than the last one. Just a few casts later, I've got another one of a similar size. Can't believe it. Yesterday was pretty quiet. Only a couple of fish caught. This morning, nothing. And just now, in the last five minutes, we've caught two quite chunky ones. He was ready to go. Springtime is all about fish that are waking up. These fish are in cold, deep holes from the winter time and they're moving up to the shallow water. Even though they're looking for warmer water, they still aren't necessarily as aggressive as they should be. So getting those fish attracted to a moving bait like a chatterbait, a crankbait, or a swim jig can be kind of difficult. So we opted to throwing a Senko, which is a wacky rig Senko, which is just it looks like a, a plastic marker and you hook a hook in the middle of it and it has this just beautiful action, just flutters along. And it is so enticing, you'll go anywhere, whether the water be deep, shallow, clear, dirty, fish generally are, are honing in on, on a presentation like that. And I thought if we threw something that um, was just subtle enough for these fish to bite, Carl and Alex would definitely hook up to some good fish. And to much my surprise, we wrecked them. You know, it was, it was amazing. Look down, that. Up there is a four pounder. That's a good fish. <laughs> Look at the gut on oh that guy. Wow. Wow. Here's your fish. It's two. That is a tiny bit bigger than the other ones as well. Yeah, that's a good fish. <laughs> <laughs> on like the light setup. That is an amazing fish. For, for up north, that is, yeah. a, that is a fish. Like that is that is what people want. That's, that's mad. mad. I love it. I'm so glad they're catching them now. Congrats. That's a beast. That's a yeah. northern Illinois beast. Mental. This is what we're after. Third location. Yeah. And this we place has kicked morning. off. This place has been exactly what we're after. It was on. It was on the drop. I just can't believe this. Float flip. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is. I've just wanted to do this for so long, and now we're here. John has taken us to possibly like the least impressive looking but the most ridiculous bass fishing pond ever and we're catching them. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, did he break you apart? Nah, he just hit, uh, oh. hit him off. Freaking love it. I need to get ahead of Alex though because he's- Oh, shut, shut up. up. Yanked it tight to the rod. Unreal. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up right now. <laughs> this is so much fun. Man. I want him. Oh, oh, oh you're going falling it. Got him. Got him. That's a decent one. Take it easy. Oh. That's not a bad one. Oh, they jump, man. I love bass. Don't flip it, just easy. Just slowly easy. Oh yeah, you got this. That's my biggest ever bass. <laughs> he? Oh, he really wanted that. He golfed it. Yeah, that, that was gone. <laughs> I got a bass. It's so green. That's my biggest one. Two BBs broken in one day. <laughs> That's unreal. <laughs> Thank you, John, for filming. Oh yeah, you bet. I got the whole thing on camera. That was, that was you got that? Yeah. 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 Freaking love it. <laughs> I actually love it. Does it get you stoked? Catch it like this is. I think this is a hundred times cooler than what we could have done this morning. Yeah. yeah. This morning we could have on. Yeah, I like caught this. Cut them on crankbaits like and rocks. Like where it's built up. Yeah, and it's uh, almost like stalking them as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It's you, very you sight, intense. I'm pretty much sight fishing. That there's one down there as well. Yeah. Sick. Oh. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> I love it when fishing is this good. Because <laughs> it doesn't happen often. No. Yeah. Hooked up! Double! Oh, How's yours? Oh, yours is pretty good. Bass fishing is a joke. Yours is pretty good. This is just too freaking 
Oh, it's oh a good one. Goodness. It's a good one. Oh. Take her easy. Take her easy. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. He's he nice. Got this. He got He's this. nice. He got this. Come to me. Do not come off you. Yes! yes! <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's my biggest bass by a mile. Turn it over here real quick. That was mine. That was good. <laughs> He was pissed at you because you were catching him, then you then caught a nice one. That is a good one. That is a solid fish. Look at this. This is nuts. <laughs> this isn't even a creek. It's like... <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> you know when, like, you're really tired, you're not thinking straight, and then <laughs> all hell breaks loose and the fishing actually wakes up. It's so exciting. And that that's my biggest bass. By Personal bass. For yeah, that's like, about a three-pounder. All day. <sighs> Yes, John, thank you so much. You We're in the USA. You guys are stroking them right now. Oh, I, I, I need a photo, it's my PB. Yeah. Yeah, go <laughs> uh, uh, look at that. How about that? That's what I'm talking about. That's why we got on an eight hour flight to the USA. I just can't believe this. Oh, I so understand now why so many people fish for bass <laughs> in the US. Like, why wouldn't you? Oh, jeez. Hey, that's big. That's big. I know, I told you it's a freaking <laughs> nice one. Two and a half pounders after three pounders. After yeah, like, that's lovely. Nuts, and they're all just perfect. They're, just like they're in good condition as well, aren't they? Yeah. Mental. Like, I don't even know what to say. And they kick off like that. How about that? <laughs> we went zero to hero, like, in five hours. Talk about just a, an absolute bugger up of a day, and then we come out here and we're catching fish in a tiny little creek. What do you call these ones, Squeaky McGee? Squeaky McGee, dinks. I got myself a dink. Micro Marges. Micro Marge. <laughs> dink, dink, dink of sim. See ya. <laughs> this is insane, John. This is insane. <laughs> oh, wow. Beautiful fish, dude. Our bass fishing trip had got off to an amazing start, catching plenty of fish from that small pond. But it was now time to head back to John's house, refuel, and get ready for another hectic day's fishing. Oh, <laughs> oh my yeah. god, dude, that's, that's a stud! That's a five pounder! That's a stud! <laughs> <laughs>